The Canola School on realagriculture.com is brought to you by BSF Canada and Invigor Hybrid Canola. realagriculture.com. I am back here today with another Canola School episode and I have here with me Jack Payne who is with South Country Co-op. How's it going today? Very well Kara. So we're here today in a field to talk about seeding depth when it comes to canola and some of the considerations you're going to have when it comes to mitigating flea beetles. Right. Do you want to elaborate on that? Okay. So first of all, Kara, if you have a discussion with agronomists as to what's the right seeding depth for canola, you're going to get all kinds of opinions and recommendations. You know, half an inch to three quarters of an inch standard seeding depth. Um, some are going to say an inch deep to an inch and a quarter. Others are going to say when it's dry, go to moisture. So what is the right uh, option that you should be considering? Well, there is no right or wrong answer. You got to do what you think is right. But one thing I just wanted to mention about seeding depth with canola is your seeding depth can have an impact on how you set yourself up possibly for flea beetles. So what I want to do is just sort of take a, a look at this. Let's, let's look at a scenario. Uh, much of southern Alberta, this right now, has been dry. Uh, <clears throat> I've seen growers that have put their canola in to two inches deep. Um, they can get emergence. I've seen that because they've got it down into moisture. They've been able to contact moisture. Some of that canola is coming up. The one thing I have noticed, though, over the past few years is when I get digging around in a field, is I'm finding quite variable depth in the same field. So within the same field, I'll find canola at half to three quarters of an inch deep, and then I'll find some places where it's down two inches deep. So uh, some of the seed is shallow, some of the seed is deep. Now, depending on your moisture conditions, that can work for you or work against you. So let's look at the dry situation. If it's dry and you've got some canola seed down two inches, the other stuff that's at a half an inch is stranded in dry soil, what'll happen is the canola that's down deep, contacts moisture, germinates, gets to the surface. Now that's only part of the total uh, seed that you've put in the ground. Now if you've got flea beetles, what's going to happen is maybe there's two or three plants per square foot comes up out of that deep uh, depth. Now those flea beetles are going to say, hey, canola, and they jump on those few plants. And so now those few plants get an awful lot of feeding damage on them. And then uh, we get a rain or something a little bit later, and then the other canola that's at half an inch or three quarters of an inch germinates and comes later. And so you've got uneven emergence. Um, the other thing can happen is if you're in an area that's got relatively moist soils and you've got half an inch to two inches deep, the inverse happens. The stuff that's at, the seed that's at a half an inch emerges first because it's shallow. Again, it's only part of the stand. The flea beetles go, oh wow, canola. They jump on those few plants. And then the other plants that are struggling from two inches down break the surface maybe a few days later. And now you've got uneven emergence. But again, the flea beetles have fed early, really hard on the early emerged canola. So that's the other thing that comes into when we're talking about flea beetle damage. One thing we've got to look at is if you seed it early, be prepared that you may have to look after flea beetles because flea beetles overwinter as adults. The first canola out of the ground is going to be the target. They're hungry. They're hungry, that's what they're going to go after. Okay, So that's, that's one factor. The other factor you need to look at too is actually taking a step backwards. Last fall, I had quite a few calls coming in from agronomists saying farmers were encountering high populations of flea beetles in the fall on crops that were maturing. Well, it's too late to control them. I would mark those fields from last year and say, okay, keep an eye on that area because if there were a lot of flea beetles in that area last year, they've probably overwintered. Any canola that's been seeded close to that area is probably ripe for the picking for the flea beetles. So there's the high risk there. The, um, the other aspect to look at is your seeding rate. The old seed rate guidelines were seven plants to 12 plants per square foot. Now we've dialed that back now to about five to seven plants per square foot, five to eight plants per square foot. I know Scott Mears, um, I, I learned some very valuable lessons from him. He said, if you're targeting on the low end of the plant population spectrum, he said, it's all a numbers game. Fewer plants mean the potential for more flea beetles per plant. 
So if you're if you're seating on the low end of that spectrum of target, um, you may have to you know be on, on on the lookout to scout for flea beetles and, and, and monitor to see what's what's going on. The other factor that we have no control over, of course, are the growing conditions. And if we've got stressful growing conditions, that can lead to some problems because here's the deal. Not only is it a numbers game, but it's also how fast that canola gets out of the ground and gets from the cotyledon stage to producing true leaves. When it's in that cotyledon stage, it's very vulnerable. Uh, it can, it, it, that's when it can incur a lot of that damage early on, especially if they're stem feeding. So the idea is to get that canola producing true leaves as fast as possible. Well, if the crop is stressed, it's going to have a tough time producing those leaves. So the longer it's in that cotyledon stage, the longer it's vulnerable to canola feeding. And then I guess the other factor is in terms of, uh, of mitigating or managing flea beetles is what was your, what did you select for seed treatment? There's lots of different options out there for um, insecticide control, insect control on your canola. And you really have to look at what you, you uh, used for a seed treatment. Now I know this year because seed was sometimes short uh, and maybe you didn't always get what you wanted. You know, there might be some situations there where you had to uh, uh, make do with what you could get your hands on. So again, if you, if you don't feel confident that you've got a good seed treatment base, then you probably want to be scouting for flea beetles. So now if you're looking at uh, some of the issues being uneven emergence, when a farmer's going into the field and they're seeding, how often are you recommending you're actually getting out of the tractor, going out into the row and digging up what's there? Right. I think back here, I guess I'm dating myself, but I remember working with, when I was in soil conservation, when we were doing the direct seeding field days. We did tons of direct seeding field days up until about 2002, 2001. And that's where these tools came in. Everybody is, I can remember we'd have a direct seeding field day, we'd have a different seeder run down this, and, and people were just like ants behind it. And they were down on their hands and knees and they're all digging, looking for the, the fertilizer band and where the seed row was and whatever. Um, and we do that several times actually, because you wanted to see how consistent you were. Um, I think sometimes maybe we get a little bit lax. We, we pull into a field, set it up, go in, make a pass, dig around. Okay, well, that's good. We're good to go. Um, I, I'll be very honest. Over the past three years of field scouting, I have seen a, quite a bit of variability in seeding depth, not only in canola. Uh, I, I've seen it in lentils. Last year, I, I was looking at some lentils seeded in southern Alberta. The lentils were a half an inch deep to over three inches deep. I've seen it in field peas. I was in a field pea field last year. The peas were just below the surface to three inches deep. Now I know they didn't do that intentionally, so that wasn't part of the um, uh, part of, the, of what the plan was. But obviously, something happened in the course of, plant, of seeding that field that there was uneven planting depth, and so. Um, you know, just, I guess, post-seeding, you know, assessment of afterwards. You know, how's my drill, how's my seeder working? It, you know, am I getting consistent depth control or are there some issues? You know, is it speed related or is it something else with the equipment? So um, this time, this, this, this time of year right now where we're, we're looking at, you know, crop coming out of the ground, this is the time to really do an assessment of how well did my seeder work?